Hello world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to CodingScientist.com. You are watching one of the most exciting and beautiful series on ESP32, ESP8266 and ESP32 CAM 0 to Hero series. Guys, in the previous two lessons, I showed you how to read the sensor information from uh, MPU, uh, uh, the, the accelerometer and gyroscopes and stuff like that. And we did populate that into the OLED, right? We were able to read the sensory information and transfer that into the OLED. And we were able to read those sensor information in our terminal, that is your serial monitor, right? Now, in this lesson, it's going to be, you know, very special because this lesson name itself is called ESP32 Accelerometer and Gyroscope on the Web. So I hope you guys are ready with the file system uploader plugin in the previous lesson which I showed you and you have set up your environment in such a way that you are ready to upload the programs into the plugin itself. So basically in this lesson I will show you how to build a web server with the ESP32 to display the MPU uh, sensor, MPU6050 sensor readings uh, that is basically your accelerometer and gyroscope sensor, right? And we will also create a 3D object, a 3D representation on the web of the sensor orientation on the web browser itself. It's going to be really, really interesting. The readings are updated automatically using the server sent events. Okay, that is how it works. And the 3D representation is basically handled using a JavaScript library called 3-T-H-R-E-E, 3.js, not numerical 3, it's called T-H-R-E-E.js. I'm not going to talk about JavaScript libraries and stuff like that, but I have uh, with great difficulty, I tried to play around, learn myself on the JavaScript library and try to build it and plug in and it, it worked. So I'm going to leave those bundle into my GitHub. You can just straight away download. In case you guys are interested to learn more about JavaScript, you know, there are ton loads of open source platform in the YouTube, in, in, in Udeme or, you know, you, you may take up it. It's really good to get hands on into that. But for me, you know, I, I really didn't, uh, you know, worry much about getting deep into JavaScript. So I, I just took that as an example, only that particular library called 3three.js, tried to play around and get into some basic stuff. So the ESP32 board will be basically programmed using the Arduino core. We are going to use Arduino core. So most important thing guys, before we progress, make sure that you are ready with the file system uploader plugin, right? Which we please refer to the previous lesson, which I showed you how to use that plugin, how to download and how to configure, create a file into the perfect path and do the test, how to run the test and kind of thing. We also need to, uh, uh, you know, download a library called Arduino underscore JSON, J-A-S-O-N. And we also need a Adafruit uh, unified sensor library. Uh, and one of the lessons, earlier lessons, I we did some examples uh, using the library called ESP async web, web server, right? So I hope you are ready with that. And also the async TCP library. So these libraries are pretty important, which I showed you in the previous lessons. And uh, of course, the Arduino dot uh, underscore JSON we will install right now and I will show you how to do that and the unified sensor. Before we go straight into the project, it's important we need to understand and outline what our web server will do. So let's let's quickly take a look at it, how this looks like. So this is the ideal way, you know, th this is what I'm trying to represent. Basically, the web server displays the gyroscope values of x y and z values all the three it's it's a three axis uh, right so mpu6050 is a three axis uh, accelerometer gyroscope and stuff the gyroscope values are updated on the web server every 10 milliseconds that is that is the refresh rate which picks up from the javascript so that is what i uh, i try to build in the code itself so it basically displays the accelerometer value that is x y z and these values are updated every 200 milliseconds. This is parallelly, which goes on in another box. The MPU6050 sensor module also measures the temperature, which is pretty good, right? So we can measure the temperature and throw that information on the web. Can also display the temperature value. 
the temperature is updated every second that is 1000 milliseconds in the arduino code that is the that is the method i put it right so using c++ all the three readings all these readings are updated using the server sent events okay i, I will not I, I will not get into the details of what is server sent events but i'll leave some information below this video for you to read across <coughs> There is a 3D representation of the sensor as well. So the orientation of the 3D object changes accordingly to the sensor orientation. As we change in the previous lesson, I showed you as and when we move the pitch, yaw and the roll right of the MPU6050 sensor, the direction changes and the reading value changes. So that is what is going to happen in the three dimensional view, right? That is what it's going to look like. And it's just not on the web browser, guys. You can open it through your mobile as well. So it's you don't have to be in front of a computer you can just open it up on your mobile itself the 3d object is basically created using a javascript library called 3js t h r e e dot j s which i mentioned to you before and of course there are four buttons to adjust the position of the 3d you can see these buttons there's a reset button which which sets the angular position to zero on all the axes all the three axes like that is x axis y axis and z axis now let's take a look at the architecture how we are going to build this particular project i'm going to show you some high level architecture of this entire project so if you so basically we have the mpo6050 if you look at uh, the pin drawing above me and this architecture that is the way it's going to get connected to your esp32 uh, microcontroller right and then from there, we, the, the output is going to be on a thin client, on the client. We are going to publish locally with the file system which we created. And that file system is going to be pulled using the JavaScript and throw into the HTTP client. So that is how this entire system works. And it's going to be through I2C communication and server sent events. So guys, you know, for the beginners, for those of you who are just getting into the microcontroller, you may struggle to understand all these jargons but do not worry you know i am there for you set up a one-on-one -on -one with me i will take up a zoom conference zoom call with you i will walk you through everything systematically line by line you know code by code pin by pin architecture by architecture the drawing by drawing you will get hands-on not worry about that for now for those of you who want to build the project pretty quick you can take up this lesson the codes are there in my github you can go ahead and bombard and just deploy and then now let's take a look at our file system architecture how it's going to be so it's the same way what we did in the previous lesson i showed you how to use that plugin create a file in tools and within tools how you are going to uh, put your ino dot ino the arduino code the main mpu6050 code is going to be there and then the another folder subfolder called data within that data we will have the index.html and style.css that is your grids and stuff and the javascript uh, file which is all these three files are going to reside inside the data folder so that is how your entire file system is going to be and that is how the system the esp32 is going to fetch as per the lines of the code we had written and it's going to throw up into the web right and then this is last and final you go ahead and plug in your circuit go ahead and build your circuit this is how it is it's, it's pretty simple the sda is connected to gpio 21 it's the same circuit what we did for uh, populating into the oled screen right gpio 21 and 22 for sda and sel and the common ground and the common uh, positive connection that is 3.3 volt we haven't connected uh, our OLED because it's not required, right? So I'm just going to publish this data into the web and see how it looks like. Now let's get into the real world. So I'm going to, let me just look at it. So, all right, let's, let's go ahead and download the libraries. Jason, Arduino underscore Jason. So let me just open up my sketch. I'll go to new, new sketch. All right, make sure our Arduino, uh, sorry, uh, the ESP32 is connected and we are well connected into that. I hope, oops, I think I'm not sharing my screen. Let me share it guys, I'm sorry. All right, now let's go to sketch. 
include library manage libraries okay let it get refreshed it takes couple of minutes couple of seconds actually to refresh in this you are going to say arduino sorry it's a spelling mistake arduino underscore json should be in up case upper case <coughs> excuse me json arduino underscore json why it's not populating there is nothing coming up that is kind of weird let me close this just give me a second guys i am not sure why it's not populating and my arduino is getting hung all right arduino underscore json it seems to be correct sketch include libraries manage libraries updating the list let me paste it here just to avoid any spell mistake what's happening why is it behaving erratic arduino underscore json there's nothing coming up it's kind of weird let me just close it try again include libraries manage libraries let me just try json maybe i didn't connect to the board or something let me just check i am connected to comp 12 and let me check the board arduino 32 do it esp all right let me go to include library manage libraries let's say arduino json that's kind of weird i just installed about 30 minutes back before i prepared for this video and i'm not sure why is json arduino j okay there you go all right so i need okay i need to just say j arduino j can you see this if you say arduino space j it shows up this arduino underscore json so guys go ahead and type this you know you saw me struggling right so you you got to do some trial and error and see so arduino und if you type arduino underscore json j a s o n it doesn't come arduino j s o n right so can you see the second one it says it's installed for me so type arduino space j it's going to come and then you click here install and then what we will do is we will i will just one second i will just come back to you in a minute and then there is another library called adafruit unified sensor let me just copy this i have written it down okay uh, are you know add a fruit unified sensor i hope you guys can see my screen let me go to include library manage libraries we need to install this library as well I have already done it. I just want to show you guys what exactly is that. Uh, there is a copy paste issue. 
all right add a fruit unified sensor nothing is showing up i think it should be at the bottom if you scroll it down to the bottom there you go can you see add a fruit unified sensor so go ahead and install you will see a install button here just click install is going to take few seconds and i would highly recommend go ahead and read through click more info read through and understand what exactly it does right so once you are done with that guys what you need to do is go to my github open my github account all right and then i will show you there's something called esp32 mpu6050 web server dot rar so this zip file go ahead and download it and inside the download i created the live the file system the way it should look like right for example let me show you the way it is in my system the way i configured so it's basically in my c drive inside c drive arduino in arduino there are tools and libraries so inside tools i have esp32 file system fs inside fs i have these two which is again tool and esp32 mpu6050 web server if i open this this is your main core and then we have the data if you look at uh you know if you if you if you look at the uh, file system how it works i showed you in the previous lesson and i showed you the previous slide right so that is how the distribution should basically happen and inside that that data of course the index and the javascript and the style the formatting everything is there so the entire repository is there in my github you can go ahead and download it and you can go ahead and configure as i mentioned now let's upload this code guys let's see how it works so i have already done it it's uploaded and make sure that you are holding the boot button i don't think i need to repeat because last several lessons we had been i had been showing you how to hold the boot button and upload it so once you open up this code all right it's a pretty lengthy long code i can explain it to you one by one but make sure that before you upload you put your wi-fi ssid here within the double quotes and the password here within the double quotes this is mine so don't do not copy as it is it has to be yours once you upload it now let's see i need to reboot it let's open the serial monitor i am going to press the e n button once i press the e n button it's going to connect to my wi-fi there you go this you should get this particular message it's very very important guys can you see f s p i f f s mounted successfully and m p u 6050 found so that means the sensor has detected and is throwing the information into the web now let's copy this ip address let me open up the browser 192.168 192.168.0.0. What was that? 0.102. 0.102. Let's cross our fingers. And there you go, guys. This is amazing. I am going to just change the orientation. Wow. Can you see the 3D? graphical representation you can reset the position i click reset it's going to reset it's going to be in a straight level position the way the breadboard has been i'm using the breadboard right so breadboard is on the table it's exactly on that if you see the gyroscope the accelerometer and it's reading the temperature now let me move my breadboard let me do the yaw pitch let me share the other side of the screen with you guys so that give me a second all right now you can see let me just one second uh, let me close this all right now you guys can see this can you see i'm i'm just trying to change the orientation if you see the video behind me it's my secondary video where i'm holding my esp32 on the breadboard with the mpu6050 
and the data is getting populated into the web browser live in a real world environment. Guys, this is fantastic, right? Just imagine the um, kind of projects we can make. Ton loads. This is a real time IoT stuff, right? And if you include this project into robotics, just imagine your bot is moving around and you can, you know, look at the orientation of your robot real time on the on the browser, either on the computer or on the mobile. You can just open up your mobile and type this IP address if you are in the same network and you can open up the screen. This is great. All right. I am changing the orientation. Let me change it this way and this way. Now, which is pitch, which is yaw, you got to figure it out. I showed you the drawing, how it looks like. That's that's the way we got to actually manipulate our bot, the way it's going to move around based on the pitch, yaw and the roll. That's the way the sensor information has to be captured and that accordingly we need to change our codes. Guys, this is fantastic. All right. So let me just reset, uh, not required, maybe yeah, I'll keep it straight. This is kind of fantastic guys. It looks like a video game, right? Anyways, so that's it for this lesson guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, watching and uh, do play around with this particular project. Take the code from me, it's there on my GitHub. Go ahead and download. If you have any questions in setting up and configuring the entire project, do reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you. I'll schedule a one on one with, on the Zoom and I will help you give you a complete hands on session in this project. Not only this project, but any other project. In the upcoming videos, we are going to do more complex and advanced projects using ESP32 and I will slowly get into the ESP32 cam where we are going to detect the images. We are also going to connect that to the OLED. We will also connect the MPU6050 acceleration and gyroscope sensor along with the camera and try to visualize the orientation of the images being captured. Just imagine. It's going to be stellar. All right. Goodbye, guys. See you.